Okay, I'm just gonna shoot a quick update video on my RANS S21. I am uh, right at 14 months waiting for my Titan IO340. Currently it's January 16th, 2022. I ordered this engine November of 2020. So we're right at 14 months, year and two months. A couple updates um, on my gear. I've been having issues with my right tire. It's been going flat. I fill it up about every week it goes flat. So I took it home and looked for an air leak and I got a little pinhole leak there. So Rands is gonna send me another tire and I uh, send this one back and then Desser will uh, refund the money. So I'll get that back, but that's no big deal. Just pull off the tire. I got a little jack stand there, uh, pretty basic. Another thing I've been working on He's trying to do this light speed ignition backup battery system. Okay, I'm gonna do a little tabletop diagram here before I get out to the hangar and show how I actually wired this. So this is for the light speed engineering dual power supply. So this diagram is pretty down and dirty. You got basically your main battery, hooks into the alternator, um, powers uh, and charges your main battery. And then you got your auxiliary battery. They recommend a 4.5 amp hour uh, typical battery both are to ground and then the way they have this wired to charge your main battery is through a 10 amp breaker shot key diode that only lets it charge your backup battery doesn't let your backup battery back feed into the main battery and then you have a power select switch which selects between a main battery and your auxiliary battery and it only does ignition on ignition B is how they how they uh, denote it on this diagram. And then there's a voltmeter at after the switch to let you know what the voltage is out of either your main battery or your auxiliary battery for that ignition B. And up here, ignition A switch just turns on the that's just a switch to turn on ignition. It's directly connected into the battery. So my biggest question over the last uh, few years, knowing that I was going to have a light speed uh, ignition system with dual light speed on my engine is how is all this wired up? How do I do all the connections? I know light speed recommends that you carry the ground on the shielded portion of a wire. So use a, sh a single conductor shielded wire. The shield is the ground. The conductor is the positive. And how do I wire all this up? I obviously didn't want to put my main battery and my auxiliary battery tied together, even though there's a shot key dial there. I don't want them tied together when my airplane's off. How do I put that into the bus? How do I wire this switch over here that does the power con power connect? And it this diagram, they say wire each battery or each ignition separately to the battery. So you'd have two separate wires going to the ignition. But the way this diagram is, is it looks like you don't split out your wiring till this switch so one you got one wire or one line out of your batteries and at the switch is where the ignition goes to the first ignition and the second ignition i was very confused nobody really had the answer everybody said we'll look at the diagram that's how you do it and even talking to rands they recommended talking to light speed engineering and then when you ask light speed engineering they say look at the diagram so I uh, asked around and distilled this down into what I thought would work the best for two light speed ignitions where you had to have a battery supply to keep your engine running. So this is my wiring diagram, uh, simplified, taking the principles out of a light speed engineering dual power diagram. And you can see here, that's from their, cat their um, not catalog, but their manual showing a circuit breaker you got the two conductors to the circuit breaker from the battery and to the light speed ignition. And you have the ground tied together as the negative and it just goes around the house, so to speak. So it follows the positive around and you don't have a separate grounding wire. So starting with, and this is only for one ignition. So the other ignition goes straight to the ignition box. So I'm gonna use this as the left ignition will go around to the switch so I got from my main battery and wherever those little green lines are that's a ground 
jumping through the shield. So you tie uh, your shield to your negative and your positive, and then you go to your circuit breaker and your ground jumps around the circuit breaker and you have one line from your battery and one line going out 18 gauge shielded. And the next stop will be that ignition battery. So, or ignition battery backup switch. So the back of the switch has three prongs on it. One prong is when the switch is up and one prong is when the switch is down and the center prong is always powered by either, either up or down. It's an on-on switch pretty much. So basically when the switch is down, the top prong is where it is engaged to the center prong. And so your battery comes to the top prong of the switch and your shield jumps around and then it goes directly to your light speed ignition and the positive goes in the positive side and the shield jumps to the negative. So that's normal operations, switch down. When you put your switch up, it goes to the bottom prong and it goes out to your auxiliary battery. So I was concerned that there was no uh, fuse or circuit breaker directly connected. You were connecting that battery directly to that switch. So what I ended up doing um, is putting a fusible link using 22 gauge wire to my 18 gauge power wire. It's just a single 18 gauge wire. I use a normal ground. I didn't jump around using a shield on the auxiliary battery. It goes to the switch prong and then out of the switch prong, instead of having a separate wire from the battery, I just carry that terminal out to the shot key diode that keeps it from back feeding the, the um, system into a 10 amp fuse. And I'm gonna put on the avionics bus because really that's the only place I have on my fuse bus. And this will charge the backup battery when the avionics bus is on, which I don't have too much of a concern because it's a lead leaded battery. It's uh, fairly robust. So it, instead of putting it on the main bus, I just have it on the avionics bus. And the center prong is as well as going to the light speed ignition box. I'm gonna take a 20 gauge wire Put it to a voltmeter so whatever battery i'm operating off either if the switch is up or down i will have uh, voltage coming out of the bolt um, the wire and it will go to the voltmeter so i know what the light speed ignition box is receiving and the way to turn that off is because it's going to be always hot with one of the batteries on that positive side the negative side i took it to the master switch so when the master switch is turned on with a the ground, then your voltmeter turns on. So you don't have a voltmeter constantly running if you took it to a ground bus and your volt, your battery would, would die from powering the voltmeter while your plane is sitting in the hangar. So I made it, the master switch will turn on the voltmeter by giving it a ground. So that kind of is just a small, uh, explanation of how I interpreted the light speed ignition dual wiring diagram, you may interpret it different. So this is a little backup battery that RANS, you can purchase from RANS for your S21. It has this little um, mount and a Parasonic small little battery. I've used a fusible link, got this from BNC. Um, basically it's a, a sheath of fiberglass tubing. I got a 22 gauge wire, six inches in length. It hooks up to the small uh, fast on connection for this Parasonic battery. And the 22 gauge wire is inside this fiberglass um, sleeve. And then it goes to your 18 gauge. So according to Aeroelectric connection, um, if you have 18 gauge, you add four, which is 22 gauge and that will give you a good fusible link to save your 18 gauge wire in case of a, this is for catastrophic failure, any type of, uh, you know, fused or the, the wire goes to ground or something like that. So with that wire is the only wire coming out of my power sonic, the other side will be the ground on the other side of the power sonic and it goes straight to my ground bus. So I'm taking this uh, fusible link, positive 18 gauge wire, up and around and it's going to go to your power select switch here so if you come around here to the switch i don't have it marked yet but in the down position it's the main battery flip it up it puts one ignition on the backup battery 
which will be on the back of this. And because there was nothing in the light speed drawing that showed any type of um, fuse protection or anything like that is the purpose of the fusible link coming out of the battery. So if there's some sort of catastrophic issue, this fusible link is just gonna burn this 22 gauge wire before it's gonna start um, causing issues with this 18 gauge wire running all the way up to your switch. Okay, we're looking at the back of the power select switch for the ignition main battery and backup battery. So this is the positive from the backup battery. And what I did is I double crimped onto that fast on connector. I, I crimped a 20 gauge wire and this is gonna go to my bus over here. I just got it along here. So what I'm gonna do is gonna have a shot key diode that only lets electricity go into the ba backup battery charging it. And then it will have a fuse on my fuse box and charge the backup battery. So that's how that is connected. Uh, back of this switch is a good little terminal block that we can double up terminals here. And then that feeds basically the charge into the backup battery then also powers the backup switch. Okay, so I'm working on the power wires for the light speed engineering ignition boxes for both the two, two ignitions left and right. So I got two 18 gauge shielded. And then what I've done is I cut away the shield and used a um, heat shrink soldering tubing to put an 18 gauge wire for the, for the ground. And so I basically brought it off of here, cut, you cut your shielding. Uh, there's some videos online. Basically you have to fold it over, fold it over the top of this thicker, thicker uh, piece of material. You don't want it over the top of your thin wire when you do that, but fold it over the thicker piece. And then you put your um, heat shrink tubing on there with a little solder sleeve inside of it. And then I brought the wires out this way to kind of keep the relief so you weren't pulling wires that way. So I brought it out like this, like I crimped on each 18 gauge wire to the own connector. And then I added a little bit of solder. I let the, the wire wire uh, hang out there just a little bit in the focused here. And then I soldered that end of the wire and uh, it's still flexible back here. The solder didn't suck up very much. I just, I just added some solder for good measure because these are your lifeline to your ignition. I need to find one more connector to do the same for this positive side. Um, I guess I forgot to put heat shrink tubing there for red but then I'm gonna put these in a fireproof sleeve here and they're gonna go back to the direct connect from the battery. These two wires will go to the circuit breaker, five amp circuit breaker and connect into the light speed ignition power wires and I'll jump the ground around the circuit breaker. Okay, at this point I have my direct connection to my battery for my ignition wires for the left and right ignition box. So here is the positives uh, conductor and then the shielded uh, wire is solder sleeved to an 18 gauge wire that goes to negative. So I got it off. I got this uh, sleeve here that's a fireproof sleeve secured it on my battery backup for my instruments and then it comes around to the back of my left and right circuit breakers. So right now I'm working on the left side because that goes to the ignition power select switch. What I'm doing is I'm gonna solder the shields together. If I can get this to focus here. So I'm working on, uh, I got this clip here to hold the two wires. I got my two shields um, uh, tinned, basically I got a little bit of solder on them. They're still flexible because there's no solder up at the base where the shield goes into the wire. And I'm gonna solder that. So I'll have my ground soldered together on the shielded wire. And then these, one of these wires is my battery and one of them is my ignition power. And it's gonna go up to the power select switch for the main battery. Okay, I just hooked up the voltmeter for the ignition. I do not have it hooked up to the backup battery. So we'll go to the, or sorry, the main battery. We'll go to the backup battery. So up is backup battery. Okay, it's off. 
off. Okay, I'm just gonna go up to um, arm for the instruments and now we get what the backup battery voltage is. And then if I go up to main battery on, we still have that. So we can see um, currently, obviously we have no engine, no alternator, so it's not being charged. So this is our just resting voltage for our backup battery. And then I switch it to the main, it would give the main voltage without the alternator running, just the regular voltage. But obviously, well, not obvious, but I have the main voltage there. Volts two is my integrated backup battery system for instruments. So we got ignition backup battery, that on and we're at 13.1 volts so that's going to be an easy way to monitor my uh, backup battery uh, and my main battery to the ignition so that's critical ignition information and that's why it's there and i don't have it in, th in this one i have my instrument backup battery on volts to the second one that's all i got going on at this point uh, again 14 months since I ordered my Titan IO340, I'm still uh, waiting for any type of uh, delivery notice for that.